number 248 and join with the choir as we sing together on this Palm Sunday and begin our service of worship. United Church of Lincoln. Oh, that kicks off Holy Week, these high holy days in the Judeo Christian calendar. We are delighted that you have chosen to be with us in observance of Palm Sunday. And for the regulars, it's good to see you. We have just a few announcements before we begin our worship service this morning. First to the visitors, if this is one or your very first time visiting the United Church of Lincoln, we're delighted to see you here. Uh, At this church, we say you're not welcome despite who you are, but you are welcome because of who you are, as a beloved child of God, full stop. And I trust that you'll feel the warmth and the love that is so authentic to this family of faith. If we've not had the enchanted pleasure of meeting just yet, I'm Reverend Corellis Bryant, and I'm the pastor here at the United Church of Lincoln. Uh, And if we don't get a chance to meet during the service, I'll be at the door to greet you enthusiastically. We have just a few announcements before we transition into our worship service. As I mentioned, this is Holy Week, High Holy Days on the Christian calendar, and we have a series of service opportunities for you throughout this week. Uh, Today, Palm Sunday, you're off to a great start, one down. We will also have a Maundy Thursday service here uh, at the church. That is going to be 6.30 on Thursday, if you still have your slips there. It's also in your bulletin. We will be doing a Good Friday service, and that will be at 12 noon on Friday here at the church. On Monday, Thursday, we'll be observing communion. the the Eucharist, as well as a tenebrae service, which is this really powerful service of light and shadow and darkness as we journey with Jesus to the tomb. For Good Friday, it will be a full Good Friday observance, and it will feature the foot washing ritual. This is uh, the scene in the biblical text where Jesus kneels to wash the feet of his disciples 
If you're not enthusiastic about the foot washing part, uh, I've gathered that some of us are not. Uh, please come and observe Good Friday anyway. It is not mandatory. Um, and we will have a full Good Friday litur- uh, liturgy. So I invite you to come and observe Good Friday, even if you don't come down uh, for the foot washing ritual. But if you do, I will be uh, the only one. Um, again, it's a ritual, so there's not going to be like soap and a scrub brush and, you know. <laughs> If you've got some things you want me to, to, to deal with, I can't do that. If there's, you know, um, in fact, if you want to get a pedicure before you come. Uh, so nothing elaborate. The classic ritual is I will pour water over your feet and I will dry them with a cloth. And that is the ritual. So if that appeals to you, I, I'll tell you. If you've seen the mural in my office, if you've seen one of my business cards, the foot washing scene is my favorite image of what it means to be a pastor. And so if you could grant me that opportunity to demonstrate that, I'd be deeply honored uh, by that. But gauge your your own comfort zone there. Then we have Easter sunrise service at 6.30 on Gove Hill, the top of Gove Hill. I've learned the hill in the last week. And we'll be uh, at Burnham for the breakfast right after and then back to the church for the 9.45 Easter uh, Sunday service. Um, there is still uh, the Haydn concert. I think I said Hayden last time, but it's Joseph Haydn. The Seven Last Words of Christ is beautiful uh, classical music with a uh, string quartet. That is on Good Friday the 29th at 7 p.m. at Memorial Baptist in Middlebury. So there might be a flyer, but if you're looking for something to do the evening of Good Friday, this concert at Memorial Baptist, Joseph Haydn's Seven Last Words of Christ. Uh, If you could get your names in for the Easter Memorial, either gifts or flowers, if you could send those to Judy Brown in the church office by Wednesday. These are for the Easter flowers and gifts. If you'd like to have one in memoriam, uh, send those names to Judy by Wednesday. There is also the Easter Vigil that is just about full, but we'll have more on that later in the service if you've not yet signed up. Um, Or now. Yeah, (laughs) or now. Good morning, church. Good morning. I actually have two announcements. Uh, the American Baptist Home Missions, we are going to take it. We take a deacon offering every month for a certain missions, and so ours this month will go to them. And uh, the, I just want to read the scripture on the front of the book, and this will be in the back if you want to look more of it. Because of God's great love, we are not consumed, for God's compassions never fail. They are new every morning, and great is his faithfulness. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. So this, we've been doing this ever since I've been here, and much longer, I'm sure. Missions is the heart of God. I really believe that. So that is one thing that's going on. Now, the vigil, vigil, not vigil. My wife had to correct me about 12 times on that. The Vigil, and for some of you who, who are new and may not understand, this is a tradition that the United Church of Lincoln does to honor. We come and symbolically we sit before the tomb of Christ, uh, waiting for the whole weekend to pass because about the third hour, about the ninth hour of the day, he was taken off the cross and laid in a tomb, and a stone was rolled over. So we will have vigil 24 hours a day seven not seven days a week but for the whole weekend and there are slots back here on the board if as you walk around and especially in visiting if you feel like you would like to come and participate in that please do we'll have chairs and um just a simple place to come meditate and symbolically sit before the tomb waiting on the resurrected Christ. So that's what the vigil is for. If you have any other questions, please contact me and I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Glenn. This is also newsletter week, so if you have uh, something you'd like to submit uh, to Judy to be included in the newsletter, please try to have that to her by Wednesday 
of this week, I'm talking mostly to myself. Um, <laughs> are there any other announcements for the good of the church body? Brown? Yes, Jim Brown. Okay, so today, at the request of the Easter Bunny who was pulled out of the ditch yesterday, um, will be an Easter hang gun at 1 o'clock, so if people can meet downstairs in the church, we're going to start right at 1, so make sure you're there a little early, get off your winter boots and winter coats. And if you know somebody at home who would like to come, you'd like to give them a call, do so after church. We will not have second hour, which will allow the Easter Bunny time to hop around. So 1 o'clock, plan on being here, or to start at 1, be here a little early. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Any other announcements? Yeah, Kathy. I put the um, sign-up sheet for the Easter Brothers in the back of the church on the table, just so you can remind yourself that you did sign up or you didn't sign up and what you said you'd bring. Wonderful. Any other announcements? Judy? No. Okay. Well, with that, friend, we will shift to our worship us this morning as we gather as a body. I invite you into some centering breaths with me as we transition into the worship service to sort of clear our minds, steady our hearts. Three big breaths. I invite you to breathe in with me. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One last time. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lord, we thank you for the very breath of life, your first gift to us. Lord, we're honored to have Rebecca DePinto with us this morning, leading us in our music worship. And now, Sister Rebecca, will you usher us into a time of worship?
Thank you, Rebecca, for that stunning, stunning prelude. We now will have our call to worship in today's service. That is printed in your bulletin. And this morning, the call to worship will be led by our beloved deacon, Miss Jenny Vautier. Good morning. morning. Did the stones know? Did the stones know that they would soon have to shout Hosanna? Because those who had first shouted it would soon be shouting crucified. Did Jesus know? Did Jesus know that those who followed in this fickle crowd would soon turn their backs on the only hope they had? Did Jesus tell the stones? The quote for today is a scripture verse. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Our first hymn of the morning is hymn number 95, At the Cross. I invite you to stand if you are able And if you would like to, hymn number 95, At the Cross, let's stand and lift our voices together.
beautiful. You sound good. Who remembers singing that from childhood? Anybody? Just a few of us for whom that was, that was a, a powerful hymn there. Uh, remain standing for a word of prayer. Lord, we come on this Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week, where we follow love incarnate on the way to sacrifice, on the way to death, only <laughs> to not be defeated and rise again. But on this side of that journey, open our eyes and ears and hearts to think more deeply this cycle about what it means to follow Jesus, to follow love incarnate, to follow the Christ. Let this Holy Week bring us deeper and deeper in our examination of what it means to follow you and what it means to count the cost and what it means to lift you up. Lord, be with us in this service today. We want to feel your divine presence intimately. You are omnipresent, always with us, but we must confess, Lord, sometimes you feel near and sometimes you feel not so near. So, Lord, we are beckoning that you boldly occupy the space, abide with us, commune with us, dine with us. And we'll give you thanks and praise and we ask this in the way that your son Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
for me. Amen. Amen. Now we turn to our children's message, which is an opportunity to share with our younger friends a message that's on our heart. And today the children's message will be brought to us by our beloved deacon. Yeah. Testing. Just what I need, another microphone. Thank you. Well, I guess I'm wired. Um, let me pull this up, because if I sit down on the edge here, I will not be able to get up until supper. Well, as you may have gathered from today's service thus far, that the purpose of today, what, what this Palm Sunday is about, is, is, is Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, and it was to observe the Holy Week with his disciples, and part of his celebration they had planned on was a dinner party. Well, first of all, Jesus sent his disciples out to find means of transportation. And in Mark, Luke, and John, it says that Jesus sent the disciples out to find this donkey and bring it back as transport for Jesus. Matthew, however, says they were sent out to get two donkeys and bring back two donkeys. And I'm just wondering what happened to that second donkey. <laughs> May have been sort of like their version of horse wrestling. I'm not sure, but... Um, that's been one of the questions I've had about this era, this event. <clears throat> and the people uh, lined the streets, and they laid down their palm branches and their jackets and things like that on the street, and they, and you heard it today, they shouted Hosanna. I've often wondered what Hosanna was. Well, when you translate it from Hebrew to Greek to Latin to English, it says, help us now. I didn't know that. So they greeted him as their next king. They soon discovered he was not the king they were expecting. Now, as we've heard from most of this morning is about this rock thing, is that some of the Jewish um, religious leaders, the Pharisees, those guys, approached Jesus when he was on his donkey and said, keep the noise down. Uh, you know, things would be get out of hand. We could have a riot on our hands here. Tell him to hush. And that's when um, Jesus said, if the, well, to me, said, uh, well, Luke is paraphrasing, says, Jesus replied, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. If the crowd had gone silent and the rocks had cried out, it would have been the world's first rock concert. <laughs> Not all that. In any event, let us celebrate the arrival of Jesus into our hearts. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Brother Mike. Rock concert. Uh. All right, friends, we are off to Sunday school, I believe, and we went 287, 287, were you there? I invite you to stand if you are able and if you would like to, so that we may lift our voices together. Were you there? Hymn number 287. Let us stand and sing this hymn together. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Were you there? Were you there? Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, and it will be led by our beloved deacon, Miss Lori Atkins. Good morning. You will find this on page 823. I'm going to read Mark 11, 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at the Bethpage in Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples.
If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread the deep branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Horasa, 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 blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our righteousness and David. Hosanna, the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany in the Bible. Thank you, Lori, for that reading. Friends, that was the gospel of the Lord, and we say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We've now arrived at the preaching moment. I'll invite you to pray with me. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Amen. I can't believe I made it into the story. My friends, this ladybug has accompanied me all service long <laughs> into the pulpit. That's good luck, I think, right? <laughs> well, hopefully I didn't just step on it. Um, <laughs> no, she's still, she's somewhere. She's still there. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Uh, you know, my friends don't believe it's me. But let me assure you, it's me. Jesus may win best lead actor in this story, but as for best supporting actor, that honor is mine. Without me, the primary action of that day just doesn't happen. If it's the turkey for Thanksgiving and, for some weird pagan reason, the bunny for Easter, then, folks, for Palm Sunday, it's the donkey. It's me. Side note, for those of you who've been wanting to call your pastor one of the donkey's famous nicknames, this is your only chance. <laughs> It's me, the donkey. I am the best supporting character on this Palm Sunday, and I must tell you my story. First, let me clear up some confusion, Mike Harding. I know different accounts of this story uses different language to talk about me. Some just say donkey, some cult, some foal, and some mention that there might have been two. <laughs> because I am a male and less than four years of age, I am a cult. And if I were a female less than four years old, I'd be a filly. And if me or my sister were one year old or less, we'd both be foals. 
And if God forbid that day of darkness arrives when I'm made to separate from a part of my own body, you know that dreadful day, then I'd be what you'd call a gelding. <laughs> or a male donkey who's no longer intact. <laughs> so I'm a cult. And because I am a cult, Mike, uh, less than four years old, often you will see me accompanied by my mother. Because often I'm not going to go out into this world and venture out unless my mother is right by my side. So my mother was playing an invisible support role, but it really was all about me. So some gospel writers mention that she may have been there and others do not. And I'm not just a cult, any cult. There is a detail about me in this story that makes it all the more gripping. I'm not just a young donkey, which humans are reluctant to ride. I am also a donkey that has never been ridden. Prior to Jesus, no one had ever sat on me before. And it's that fact that compelled me to share my story with you today. Jesus was the first person I ever carried. And because it was my first ride, I remember it like it was yesterday. I know what it means to carry Jesus. I know what it means and what it feels like to carry Jesus with me through life. I know what it's like to lift Jesus up. I vividly and passionately know what it means to carry Jesus. Do you? Do you know what it is to carry Jesus. I don't know what your experience has been like, but I'm about to tell you mine. First, who do you say I was carrying? Because I've heard various different answers on this. On that day, on Palm Sunday, some say I was carrying a king. A king that would set up a new kingdom of God on this earth. Some say I was just carrying a really good teacher. A rabbi who knew the law really well and taught people how to live. Some say I was carrying a leader of a revolution who had come to overthrow the Roman Empire. Some say I was carrying the greatest friend a human can have, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother or sister. And some say I was carrying the Son of God. Some say I was carrying love incarnate. Who, who do you say I was carrying? Who is this Jesus to you? There were three amazing things that happened to me as I was carrying Jesus. I, I, I all of a sudden was reminded of my value. Before those disciples untied me, I was just a young cult. I thought I wasn't big enough or strong enough to do anything that mattered. Other donkeys who were much bigger and stronger than I got to participate, but I was left out. But on that day with Jesus, I learned what my true value was. The world may have looked at me and not seen much. The world may have looked at me and counted me out. The world may have looked at me and written me off. But when Jesus looked at me, he gave me a purpose just as I was. I was good enough for Jesus 
And I went from being written off by the world to being written on by the king. Not good enough to carry a suitcase, but plenty good to carry the Savior. Hallelujah. Anyone out there know what I'm talking about? How Jesus can remind you of who you really are, that you have value just the way you are. I I could almost preach up here. The second experience I had of carrying Jesus was this almost metaphysical experience. Uh, When I first saw Jesus, he seemed a slight man, if I'm being honest. I mean, he mostly ate at potlucks in the homes of others, and then he walked everywhere. But when he first initially started to sit on me for a nanosecond, I felt this indescribable weight, almost like he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. It was extremely brief, but just for a tiny moment as he first started to climb up onto me, there was a heaviness that only he could understand. A weight that only he could carry. But, but, but then, as he was fully sat and settled in, unbelievably, he felt as light as air. It was the strangest thing. Once I was fully holding Jesus, his burden was light. And then I also realized another amazing thing. My burden was light. I had this remarkable ease carrying my own weight. I I wasn't a huge donkey anyway, but even the little burden I had felt so much lighter when I was carrying Jesus. It was almost like he shifted my weight onto himself, even though I was the one carrying him. It was a strange phenomenon. But I bet some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. The last really interesting thing that happened while carrying Jesus, it was about the path that we took. I had not been taken out onto the roads very much in my young life, but I had some experience. And if you're not familiar with the road conditions in the greater Jerusalem area under Roman occupation, you know, unpaved, hazardous, difficult to maintain, I was told by your pastor that you'd have no problem relating. (laughs) But with Jesus, even the path ahead was clear and easier. I found myself no longer walking on rocky, dusty roads, but instead on soft fabric and palm branches from the people who had come to praise Jesus. They they threw their cloaks and their, their palms in the path of Jesus. The pathway when carrying Jesus became cushy and soft and comfortable, which meant I could walk a little farther in my journey. I could travel a little longer and a little easier. With Jesus straightening out my path and softening the way, it makes the roads of life a little easier to travel on, and it makes it easier for you to travel just a little while longer. Anybody here know what that's like? 
Friends, it was a day I will never forget. I, I don't know if, if you know what it's like to carry Jesus, but I would highly recommend it. I give it five stars. When the world counted me out, he reminded me of my value and purpose. And when life could have felt heavy and weighed me down, he shifted my burden unto himself. And when the path was rocky and the road was hard, he made the path soft, at least for that day. And that's just what he did on this Sunday. I'm told that next Sunday he will do something different. I'm told that next Sunday he'll do something even greater. I'm told that next Sunday he will go the ultimate distance for you and he will be the one carrying you. But on this Sunday, do you know what it's like to carry Jesus? I have my story, and it's one I'll never forget. Do you have your own? Do you know what it's like to carry Jesus? Do you? Amen. Friends, that brings us to a brief moment of holy silence. Barring from the tradition of our Quaker friends, in this silence, we can notice the beauty of being gathered. being one. In so many other phases in our life, we might feel alone in this remote rural region. But in this moment right now, we are one. And with that, we will turn to our last hymn of the morning. When I survey the wondrous cross, it's number 258. 258 in your hymnals. When I survey the wondrous cross, I invite you to stand if you are able and if you'd like to for our last hymn of the service, number 258. When I survey famous hymn together.
these words of benediction. Love so divine demands my soul, my life, my all. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for having gathered today. Let that spirit that is bursting forth in us now spill over from our hearts into the roads of this green mountain paradise. May we bring the light uh, to others. May we stay connected to you as the true source of our light. And Lord, we will thank you every time we spot you, every time we detect the divine. Make yourself plain to us, Lord, and give us the eyes to see it. On this journey to Holy Week, let us deeply reflect on the path we follow the path that Jesus has laid out for us. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve. Amen.